Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's time to watch Gamescom opening night live is going to begin in, uh, I don't know when it's going to begin really who could know such a thing. Um, all I know is the list of games I have in front of me here. I'm Jeff Gerstman and here's the list. This is a two. Okay. We are about to buckle the fuck up because this is a two hour live showcase of what's next in video games, according to this press release I received from Jeff Keighley. Um, and there's a list of games here. Sonic Frontiers is the first name on the list. Hogwarts Legacy. The Callisto Protocol. High on Life. Return to Monkey Island. Lies of P. Genshin Impact. I don't know if you've heard of that one. The Outlast Trials. Gotham Knights. Honkai Star Rail. Goat Simulator 3. And The Expanse, colon, The Telltale Series. And many more to be announced. Uh, yeah, we're going to be uh, honkying on Bobo over... Oh, man, I don't, I don't have my harmonica. Shit. Well, what are we going to do? I don't have... I don't, we don't have a harmonica. How, how can we have a live stream with no harmonica? We've really, we've really messed this up, and I apologize profusely. Um, I'm going to um, just tweet something real quick here. To say, hey, we're streaming. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, you know, we, I feel like the, any Street Fighter news was just at at Evo, right? So that's probably not here. We're probably not seeing the next Nether Realm game here because that's probably a Game Awards reveal. Um, Trying to think of anything else that I've heard of. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, Tar Heel Teddy in chat saying, hope we get some cyberpunk DLC news. That seems like something we could see here. Multiverse has just launched all their stuff. Elden Ring DLC? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Would they do Armored Core here? I don't know. Oh, right. Dead, Dead Island 2 seems like the big one. God. Imagine being a massive, like massive Saudi backed publisher with this billion dollar bank account that you've been spending acquiring all this stuff. And you're like, what are your two big games? Well, Saints Row's out today and we're doing Dead Island 2. Remember that? Whatever that is by now. The fuck is the, what is the Embracer group? Is it a front? Right? Is it is it a is it a is it a front for something? Because it sure none of this seems real. <laughs> none of that sounds real to me. I don't know. Uh, that seems like a really a really weird. Uh, I don't know. Um, let's make sure that this is all centered up and and good. Yeah, that looks good. I'm here. I'll uh I'll get to the Let's see. Where can I We'll turn off the background on that so in case I need to dip I can do so. Let's unmute this so we can hear more of this hot tune. I'm hopeful for some like good, meaningful, and we'll probably get the Sonic Frontiers release date here because that leaked. It looks like sounds like that's uh, November eighth. There had been some other previous leak that made it sound like it would maybe be November fifteenth, but I guess they put up a trailer and then quickly hid it that said the eighth on it. So presumably that's how that will go. But this is going to be two hours. So that leaves a lot of room for some potential bangers here because the games on this list outside of Lies of P 
are maybe not doing it for me. So I am hopeful that we will see some some big shit here that maybe, you know, because a lot of companies didn't do things in the E3 window. They just held off. So uh, we'll see. Here we go. I guess let me know if the, you know, the audio sounds good to you. If you are under 18, go back to bed. Please welcome to the stage, the creator of the Game Awards, Jeff Keighley. There he is, the creator of the Game Awards, which is true. I guess, how do you intro everybody. Jeff Keeley? Like, what do you, you do in a sentence? It is so great to have a live crowd with us here in Cologne, Germany for Gamescom 2022. I'm Jeff Keeley, and I got to say, I am so excited to be here with you. We did this in 2019 live in person in Germany, and then the past two years, we had to do it virtually from Los Angeles. And in 2020, the first show that my team did together live was that August. Gamescom, and we connected with all of you virtually, and the fact that we're back here in person, I don't want to ever take this for granted before. So, uh, guys, are you ready for a fun show? Just people just get up and start leaving. Well, They're like, fun? No, I gotta what? I got to say, we have a lot of great stuff for you tonight. We have tons of world premieres. The entire industry has come together to showcase I had a world premiere button, you. but... We've got games like Sonic Enjoy Frontiers. Now I just have this one. The Enjoy Callisto Protocol. Enjoy your gaming. Outlast Trials. Hogwarts Legacy. Gotham Knights. And a lot of surprises of things that we didn't talk about in advance. So we've got some good stuff for you tonight here at Gamescom. And... I can't wait. I wonder to get if started. the you know would Microsoft announce stuff. like, hey, we, we right Death Loop is coming to Xbox. Would that be something they announce here? All right. I love the roar of a live crowd, and because we got a live crowd, we got to surprise you with some stuff tonight too. So let's start things off with our first world premiere. It's a new world from a brand new team that has a bold vision. Let's check this out. Finally, a bold vision. We want the community to build oh, hey. this. We want the Benz. their worlds. We want them to tell their stories in their game. I think it's human nature to navigate uncharted territory, to find a place where we're free to explore, to be creative, and to share amazing experiences. The goals are to make an experience that's unlike any other, which is such an exciting thing to be part of. I think ultimately, like that's kind of been the big ambition. What was this game called? Like, this was called. Was this world. called Everywhere? Can be built out in any every direction. I think it's every day is a new discovery, and it's constantly growing. We've put a lot of focus, I think, on the current zeitgeist and what it means to represent yourself digitally. This is more than a game. It's a labor of love. It's a labor of passion. The dream is to create a whole new world or every, of, is it everything? Yeah. of gamers, and I think that we've we've kind of captured that. Players will play a massive part in this. It's not going to be just our game. It's not going to be just what we decide to do with it. There's something in it that will definitely appeal to you, no matter what it is that you love to do. The really thrilling aspect of all this is that we're going to see what we're doing for the first time. I'm just so excited for people to see what we've been spending the last five years pouring our hearts and souls into. And I'm excited to see how they feel about it, even though they will have to wait just a little bit longer. Everywhere has become more than just a Everywhere, video game yeah. for us. And today, we're delighted to give you a peek behind the curtain at what we've been This was the Amazon engine, if I remember right, that they were using. I wonder if this will get a different name or if they are just going to call it. Okay. That looks like an E to me. Revolt is back!
Okay. I feel like that was just a, in a lot of ways, a bigger and more fully Everywhere. featured sure version of, of what their so website has looked like for the last the five years. Is Adam Whiting to hopefully answer some of those because uh, we're a little confused, but we want to know a lot about this. So tell us... Uh, Everywhere, what kind of game is this? What can you tell us? Adam? It's everything. Well, firstly, can I just say it's really exciting to just be here, and we've been looking forward to coming out of stealth mode and really delighted to start the conversation today here at Gamescom. Now, I won't be able to reveal everything, but what I can say is that. But really I am here to reveal everywhere. Game. I think the scope and ambition of this project are quite unlike anything else. We want to build a whole new world for gamers, and not just a place to play, but watch, share, create hang out with your friends, and so much more. Well, I got to say, uh, the end of the trailer, I think we all were taken aback by, whoa, change, change art style, this seems totally different. What, is that part of everywhere? What can you tell us? No, we just threw well, that in there. We thought it'd be funny. Many surprises we've got in store for players. I mean, we are passionate about making games and telling stories, but ultimately we made everywhere to be a place where players can make their own experiences, yeah. be who they want to be and tell their own stories. But we're still passionate about making immersive and cinematic experiences that players can just get lost in and enjoy. I guess you could say we want people to have their cake and eat it, and everywhere is the place that can happen. Cameraman is done. Right, well, He's like, all right, yeah, fine, bold, whatever. Uh, vision for what you're doing here. Uh, the other question Sounds is like we're fucking we're reading, we didn't see any data on the trailer. Any snake oil to me. He just the takes the camera and starts running away. Well, I'm delighted to say that we aim to have everywhere in the hands of players in 2023. But we've got many more things to show and tell over the coming months. And we're really excited for you to sign up on our website, everywhere.game. But really, today was just a sneak peek. I feel like I signed up on that website. Been so I, I guess I have to sign up again because really I have a different email address now. But uh, as soon as possible. I feel like well, I signed Adam, up on that website two years James ago Com. or something. It's awesome. Well, well no, I, I European studios was in an on office. Stage. And tonight, we've got a lot of European studios that are going to reveal their games uh, for the first time. And right now, we're going to move to another world premiere announcement. Ten cents joint. Anarchy Online is back. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. This is Res 2. <laughs> Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. That seems bad. It seems like, I don't, well, shit, man, I was going to use that. Sandworm, it, well, okay, well. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over. And through me. And when it has gone past, mm -hmm. I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear is gone, there will be nothing. Oh yeah. That's now you're good. Now that they're a little bit longer. Only I will remain. Hmm. Open an open world survival MMO. That's just I You could define I'm going to say 80% of video games that way in some way. Trust me, the fun is just beginning tonight. All right. How many of you out there are fans of PlayStation? No cheers in the room for Dune apparently. Well, We've got a fun surprise for you. I said, PlayStation, what can we do for all the fans coming together here at Gamescom? It's PlayStation 6. Right now, I'm honored to share this global PlayStation announcement with you right here at Gamescom. Is this more VR2 stuff? They... Is this the, a pro control? 
Astro's Playroom 2. Yeah, okay. Dual Sense Edge. There you go. The Dual Sense Edge. It's a high performance, ultra customizable wireless PlayStation 5 controller designed by PlayStation. And you see there, you can have your own uh, custom control profiles uh, customized to your play style. And if you guys want to learn more I did about not the see brand new there, controller, but... you can head to PlayStation Blog. And thanks to PlayStation for sharing that announcement with us here at Gamescom. All right, next up, the Callisto okay. Protocol. You guys hyped for that game? Thank you. Well, joining me now is Glenn Schofield from Striking Distance. Uh, Glenn, we are so excited about this game coming out in December. You came all the way over in the middle of development to Gamescom. We really appreciate it. Uh, how has the response been to Callisto so far? Man, Jeff, the uh, response has been fantastic uh, for a new IP. I couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, so I want to thank the fans. It's a great jacket. And, uh, I, I want to thank my team for uh, just really killing it. And it's great to be back at Gamescom, man. You know. Well, you got some good stuff for the fans, and we're going to get take to some that meetings, in a have some beers. Now. You know. You brought some gameplay. We saw some great stuff at Summer Game Fest. You brought more. Now, what are we going to see today, Glenn? Yeah, you've got uh, some uh, live gameplay. Uh, we've got two sections. The first one is going to show some uh, some crazy combat. And uh, the second one is uh, something new uh, from the game, a little different than what we showed. Some non-crazy uh, combat. Crazy ending. What's yes, it going to take? It is. You guys are going to love to get this. you in this uh, Ultima. One thing I want to ask you about was you're known certainly in the team for your work on Dead Space, and that game we love the strategic dismemberment. I understand you're kind of one-upping things for this game. Well, we got non-strategic dismemberment. And we've shown the gore system, um, and today we're going to show a couple new things, uh, including the one that we're showcasing system. called Games Nations. Marketing is so, so weird. Uh, the enemies may sometimes. Games marketing is so weird. It's like, so you you're known for making games where you can rip people to uh, shit. Guy, what are you doing now? He's going to mutate in front of you into <laughs> something bigger, badder, faster, meaner, and he's going to be taking you out. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Well, this I is bet, one of my I most anticipated is. games. It's coming out this, this game December. Cool Glenn, shit. thanks to you and the team for putting this together. Let's take a look at brand new gameplay from the Callisto Protocol. Thank you. All right. By the way, it's back in the PUBG universe. No. <laughs> Get over here. Fuck this. God damn it. Give me this fucking. Give me these items. Just a such a violent chest opening stomp fucking in acquisition. Yep. Yep. Fuck that guy. Yep. Why is that there? I guess they're grinding up wood. I guess that's why it's there. Pick up his body and fling it into the thing. What are we doing? Throw everything into the thing. Up. Oh, jeez. Oh, Okay, yep. Head off, still coming at you. Gotta cut him some more, I guess. You should just use the part where you just grab him and fling him into the dead the death thing. That seems like it was working pretty well. You should probably just stick with that. It's a good dot. Oh, I've, he's got a head again. Yeah, yeah. See what I tell you. What I tell you. Yay! He's riding the wild doom flume.
I like the obstacles along the way that you have to dodge. It gives it a real, like, Star Wars arcade game trench run vibe. Use the force, fucking light up neck man. Oh, that... Mm. After we done on the water slide, we're gonna go we'll get some deep fried Snickers. Oh shit. We gotta close down the water ride for a little. We gotta, hey, we gotta close down the water ride for a little bit. I just gotta, uh, you just, just don't, don't freak nobody out. I, I need, a, I need bags. I need bags. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> it just comes back. Keely fucking laughing. Yeah, lots like, more coming for <laughs> that you. That guy right got fucking cut in half. Melly, Melly, welcome to ONL. Thanks, Jeff. I was so excited to be here at Gamescom. Hello, everybody. I'm your guide for tonight for all the happy Azerbaijan gives Gamescom. you 10 points. I'm really, really excited to be here because the heart of gaming is beating once again. And game devs and publishers from all around the world are making their way to Cologne to show you hundreds of new games. So if, you, if you're not here yet and still can come by, make sure to drop by. And oh, if you bullshit. All right. Oh, yeah. Make sure to, go. Uh, to drop by next year because it is definitely worth a visit. And one of the highlights we have this year is we actually have the largest in the area ever bringing visitors and devs closer together than everywhere, anywhere else in the world. And uh, you can meet the makers of the most original, meet your and maker. fantastic and creative games here. And if you're not here, and if you can't make it here, do not worry. You can also check out the Indie Arena booth online at gamescom.global. Jeff, it's back to you. Thank you, Mally, and you'll be with us all night. We've got Gamescom Awards to come and other things, too. Oh, that's well, right. They give right out Gamescom Awards, premieres. even though this the show hasn't started yet. is one you've been waiting what for a weird for thing. a long time to see. Let's take a look at this brand new world premiere. Enjoy your gaming. Enjoy your gaming. After an age of the cruelest tyranny, man finally defeated its overlord. The gods do not fall. Forever. God fall too. God's the unfall. Of war united and began the eternal watch over their tyrant's colossal remains. This is a weird new look for Sonic Frontiers. Wow, they really did take a lot of that feedback into consideration, didn't they? End. But now, eons later. The fallen god's influence pervades the world again, corrupting even sworn enemies. For some reason, this guy's voice keeps reminding me of Seth Rollins, and I don't know why. It doesn't really sound that much like him, but there's just... I don't, my brain is broken? Though from these darkest days, new heroes arise. To defy the gods, one must embrace the darkness. And so lies our only hope. <laughs> mother, tell your children not to oh, what a great fucking business this is. What a fucking great business this is. They should have gotten a new fucking solemn cover of it. That's the only, the only thing missing. I just, I'm now like literally fucking 10% more excited for this game than I was before. So fucking kudos to everyone involved in making this highly specific call. Great work. 
on the editing front. Sure. What? Yeah. The thing of the thing. What is your? That's that's which. Yeah. When you have a game and you've come up with the name Lords of the Fallen, then you better get mother right. for your trailer. You better get two. something uh, the, the for people to remember. All right. Now it's time for another new game announcement. The Lords sequel of the Fallen. Game that redefined the term couch co-op. Check this out. Are you struggling? Missing your regular FARTs? Have you tried going online? Visit oh, is this the new Alchemy Labs game? Or... Move no, what is this? Dreams, whoever you are. Apply today. No skills? No worries. Great. Everybody's welcome. You're hired. Open a door of new opportunities. Work alone or with a friend. Or two or more. You can do it. Move local. Mother! Together online. Yeah. Nice one. Coming 2023. Team 17. Oh, moving out too. Okay. Huh. All right. Yes, it's time to step into the Potterverse. You guys excited for Hogwarts Legacy? No! Not really! Well, it is coming out in February of 2023. And tonight cool, at Gamescom, we've got the brand new trailer for you to take a look at. I don't want to say much and spoil much. This is an incredible trailer. I hope you enjoy it. The more we know about Salazar Slytherin and the Dark Arts, the best prepared will be. If either of you uses dark magic, I will notify the headmaster immediately. Unforgivable curses are so named for a reason. A spell that could save your life shouldn't be unforgivable. The dark arts seem harmless until it's too late. None of us will be able to avoid dark magic forever. What do we do now? It's up this to is us. the most I can flat you dialogue. Where I can cast what are we going to do? A spell that is going to save someone's life this is not I'm should ready. not be forbidden. Crucio. You've made your choice. Two of you done. What's up? I'm a flying horse here to tell you that apparently someone still cares about Harry Potter. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know anyone personally who does, but I, what do I know? I'm a demon horse. Enjoy your gaming. That's right. It's time Enjoy to step into the world of Borderlands now. Joining me is the founder of Gearbox <clears throat> Entertainment Company, Randy Pitchford. Randy, great to see you here. Back Thanks to for back the bangers. intro, uh, Jeff. I think a lot of these guys probably know me from my work at Gearbox creating Borderlands. Any Borderlands fans in the house? Well, I got good news. I know uh, some of you hardcore folks saw the leak. Uh, What's a but weird? I'm here to officially announce new tales from the Borderlands. Nope. Oh. Tell us about this. We remember Tales from the Borderlands. This is new Tales from Borderlands. This, this is new character, it's new. new story. It is. It is. You know, it's I new. It is. Game, it's new. Yeah. So that's it's why new. we got some of the original right. storytellers and writers that were back in the day at Telltale yeah. and developed an all new storyline with all new characters. It's new. Uh, created uh, uh, with uh, production from Gearbox Studio Quebec. Uh, it's an all new experience. <laughs> it's, and, oh, uh, all new. We're here to show it. Is it new or is it all new? You guys want to check it out? 
When did you buy? Are those pants new or are they all soon, new? Too, right? That's right. Uh, coming in October of this year. October okay. of this year, all platforms. Awesome. Well, let's take a look, Randy. This is exciting. New Tales from the Borderlands. First at Gamescom. Most stories in the Borderlands start bloody. They end bloody, too. Sometimes, all it takes to change the galaxy is a trio of losers trying to get through a bad day. We are in the middle of a TDR invasion. Leave immediately! This area is now under TDR jurisdiction! They think there was a vault key being kept on the station. If we can find whatever's in that vault before TDR does, we can change our lives! Has there literally the ever been anything like good really in a vault in a Borderlands game? Tidio has many guns. Isn't it always like you open it and you're like, ah, there's either evil shit in here or, oh, there's a gun in here that's not as powerful as the gun you already had because you overleveled for this content. I always wanted to change the universe for the better, and now we actually can! But more importantly, we'll be drowning in... Enjoy your gaming. Why? Enjoy, Why enjoy your gaming. Like this. <laughs> enjoy, 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 If you happen gaming. to see any corpses along the way, uh, don't worry about them. They're just, uh, yeah, don't worry about them. Well, I guess it won't be episodic, right? Like that's. Come back to the They'll city. Put out a full product. The deadliest spectacle of this season. I'm gonna tell you a story about a species that survived millennia. Homo neanderthalensis, Homo rhodesiensis, Homo erectus, all of them wiped out by the deadliest species of all. Uh-huh. Us. Oh. I am Astrid. I feel like if you just like squinted and thought about the cell shading filter, you could convince me that this is also a Borderlands game. Okay. So it said Techland, but survival. But today you fight for glory. Is this just dying? Fight? Anyone deal? can be a warrior. What makes you different is the spirit. Arena of DLC or something? So. Yeah. Hey, community update number one is live now. Enjoy your gaming. Red Bull gives you wings. So you want to join me? I do not, sir. We'll get scurvy. How many lemons are on your boat? If we bring a case of CC lemon. Oh, okay. All right. Texas. Sign up and be a part of my crew in Tortuga. <laughs> Tortuga. We got guns. We got space. We got words that you do in games. And that's all we have. We have a name also. Are these the sponsored segments? Because we had the Red Bull ad and now we have these like trailer looking trailers that don't get a lot of setup. I wonder if these are the ones because they said like some of this is sponsored. I'm like, yeah, no shit. When they see this yeah, hyenas will have to be here, right? They'll, profit. They'll have to show some more hyenas. If you're not going to show hyenas in Europe, then where are you going to show it? Savor the faithless truck. 
This is some. Is this some war hammers? Is that? Is are those? Are those space? Mer are those? It's who they are. Oh man, the fucking Destiny Pyramid has got all weird. Let them come and see. Our shame oh, this is. Wait, is this the the light falls? What no, wait. What the fuck am I even looking at? Okay, this is the Destiny stuff. Okay, I didn't actually watch the stuff this morning. Um, this doesn't look like Destiny. That's the craziest part about it. Like, even this treatment and all that sort of stuff, like, this... Looks Again, fucking weird. This Saturday, and that's kind of cool. The Gamescom Awards will be handed out to the winners of the best games on the show floor. Only submitted games showing at Gamescom will be eligible to be nominated. And the awards will be streamed on all Gamescom channels, so make sure to tune in. But tonight, I'm allowed to hand out four awards. I'm very, very excited about that. And I would say, let's jump straight into it, starting with the most wanted PC game. Here are your nominees. I feel like I would appreciate, and I think I said this last time they did this, but like just a single System sentence shock. that says, hey, here's how these awards were chosen. Here's who War the judging, like how did the, here's how the judging price. happened or just something like, was this voted for on a website? And the winner is Metal Helsinger. And here to accept the award is Sheila Wickstrom, executive producer at The Outsiders. The stage is yours. Thank you so much. Wow, this is a lot of people. Uh, I was practicing my speech a lot, but of course, you know, when it's um, as much people as there is right now, you'll blank. Um, but I want to say that I am honored to receive this award on behalf of my team. The team behind Metal is an am amazing bunch of people that I'm so lucky to be working with every day. And the truth is, making games is super hard. When I started out, I don't think I really realized how hard. And what I learned is that focusing on compassion, kindness, and empathy just as much as any other craft in games would be the key to successful game development. And it's precisely those qualities that my team possess and why I'm so privileged to be working with them every day. I love you guys at home. I miss you so much. So what I want to say to you, my industry friends and colleagues, is treat each other with heart, kindness, and respect every day. Make games with humanity. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again. Yeah. And Jeff, back to you. Thank you, Melly. Well, the world premiere train keeps going. It's time to move to the world of Sonic. Any Sonic Hedgehog fans out there? Any Sonic Hedgehog Sonic fans out there? Are you a the, fan uh, of Sonic, Sonic Hedgehog? Movie, which was a ton of fun earlier this year. Well, Sonic Frontiers is in development, and we've got a brand new trailer for you and confirmation of the release date, too. Check this out. I love Sonic Hedgehog. Let's see this guy. Submit. Your reckless actions endanger the world. Peace out. Yeah, so those are the teleporters that you find around the world, and when you feed them the right gems or gears or whatever, you unlock the kind of more traditional 3D Sonic levels inside of them. Those are what they're calling the cyberspace levels in these things. And then it gives you a letter grade, and yep. Yeah, I did this. I freed Amy from this thing in the demo I played. <laughs> you run circles around a thing, and then that'll do damage to it. You hold, like, you hold down a button and draw the little... You cannot 
run forever. Leave. Immediately. You know I'm Sonic Hedgehog, right? I can, in fact, run forever. There you go. It is coming this year, Sonic Frontiers. All right. Well, now yep, they did say European they were refusing to delay it. Tom ONL as a platform to announce another narrative experience. This comes from a French studio. Check this out. Enjoy your gaming. A French studio. We leave so many things behind us. Objects, memories, mistakes. lawsuits. They sink in time, touch the bottom and go to sleep. Silence is full of ghosts. And here, Voices can only come from the deep. Deep under the waves. Guys, it's time for the goats. Ready for some goats? No live goats today, but we are Ooh. here to talk about Goat Simulator 3. We got to announce this back at Summer Game Fest. And now it's time to see the gameplay of I Goat Simulator had like 3. 50 goats run out from time. behind him into Let's the crowd. Check this one out. <clears throat> it's, it still is, is somewhat amazing to me that this game got a sequel, let alone a second one. You know, sure. Oh, that's right. This is the only. That's right. This is they didn't. This is two. Right. It's funny. This looks like all of the silly, weird side shit that should have been in Saints Row. but is not. guy singing in simlish what the fuck is happening am i going crazy november 17th that has literally about everything you could imagine in it uh goat simulator 3 all right a lot of people ask me how I got started in the industry, and what I loved doing when I was a kid with my brother, we would play PC adventure games, and I grew up playing classic LucasArts and Sierra adventure games. You guys remember Monkey Island, by chance? No, what is that? Well, I am so excited because there is a new Monkey Island in development right now. Ron Gilbert, the series creator, is back. You may have heard about it. Return to Monkey Island, and tonight at Gamescom, I am so excited that we get to announce the release date, or actually, I don't. We get to go to stand to tell us the release date check this out enjoy your game enjoy your gaming hello friends it's your old pal stan coming to you through the magic of marketing to let you know that your search for quality entertainment is about to bear fruit but i wouldn't be doing my job if i just dropped the details on you without a little build-up I want you to see the kind of fine dining establishments you'll be visiting. I think this like game this looks one. good in motion. Yeah. I, you know, people 
it, it sounded like there are some people mad about the art style, but I, this, this... better than this exotic and extremely remote island. Stay back! How did you find me? I think this looks nice. Return to Monkey Island launches September 19th, which happens to be International Talk Like a Pirate Day. But you don't have to wait. You can order it right now, before it's even out. Something we in the marketing industry call a pre-order. As a bonus, I'm ready to unload this shipment of beautiful horse armor to anyone who pre-orders Return to Monkey Island. <laughs> It'll look fantastic <laughs> in your inventory. Yeah. I've got to hey, go now. Guys. I've got a lot of hey. irons and a lot of fires. Hey, you people. Know how it is. But Dude. I'll be back to steal every scene horse. I'm in in Return to Monkey Island. <clears throat> I'll see you there. All pre-order customers will receive the exclusive horse armor item in their inventory. Please note that the horse armor has no practical use in game and in no way will contribute to the gameplay puzzles or narrative of Return to Monkey Island. Even for their joke, they had to write a fucking very oh real God. sounding disclaimer at I the end. The way, and I love the horse armor. It does absolutely nothing. It just sits in your inventory. Return to Monkey Island. Cannot wait for that. All right. Now let's turn to the world of unknown worlds. Like has someone been sitting on this horse armor joke for 15 years or whatever? And it's been like, one of these days we're going to make it another one of these games. And when we do, and it's a departure from Subnautica. we're going to take it's this horse armor down a peg. It's a based sci-fi game. And uh, we're going to reveal it for the first time right here. Actually, special guest is. Let's check this out. Hi, I'm Brandon Sanderson. You might know me as the author of the Mistborn series, the Stormlight Archive, or as the guy who finished Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. Over the last few years, I've been working I've been sitting in this with chair. my friends at Unknown Worlds on the exciting project we're revealing today. You, of course, know Unknown Worlds for creating immersive and fantastical worlds like the incredible Subnautica series. When they reached out to me, I was absolutely thrilled to help craft them I'm aware of sci-fi universe hmm. in which their next game is set. This secret has been a hard one to keep. And we're so excited to finally show you what we've created <clears throat> together. So, without further ado, this is Moonbreaker. Let us keep this civilized. Welcome to the party. Hmm. With you till the end. We're gonna wisecrack and quip. It's a neat look. What if the one with the spear said, get over here? All right. That's why I rake the big bucks right in these books. I do not know that that gentleman's books, but are they all quippy and and like on, fucking? Is it like this? The crowd goes wild. Yes, the crowd goes wild. No, his book is not. His books are not like this. Well, that's a. Is that what he thinks video games need to be then? Is he just like, no, video games, you know, it's like they just, they just fucking quip up and do stuff. Let there be fire. He's a high fantasy author according to the chat. Okay. Well, that's a thing. And joining me from Unknown Worlds is Charlie Cleveland. Charlie Moonbreaker, it's real, and it's wait. Is that guy's name so Charlie Moonbreaker? Than Subnautica. So yes, tell us it is. This departure. Uh, you guys like to kind of reinvent yourselves every game, right? Yeah. So people thought we were kind of crazy for making Subnautica after making Natural Selection. We went from a strategy shooter to a pacifist underwater game, survival. Uh, so I feel like we've done this before. We, you know, we love changing genres. But I'm hoping, you know, our Subnautica fans will still come along for playing a digital miniatures game. I hope. Well, it's so cool. A digital <laughs> miniatures game. Uh, everyone loves miniatures, but how do you translate that into gameplay? What is the gameplay of this game? So uh, we're kind of channeling like a Guardians of the Galaxy or Firefly kind of feel. 
So you can see that from the colorful art style we have. Um, so you choose a captain and yeah. a crew, and you build a roster, kind of like a traditional I guess, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess you are. And I guess you are. every unit in the game is I guess really you are. Like strange and special and kind of game-breaking. So, um, yeah, you deploy units, and you move them around on the battlefield, and you get all these crazy game-changing powers, kind of like Hearthstone meets XCOM, kind of. Well, it, I love. I cool. Mean, I mean, you here, know, it like great, the and, game itself uh, doesn't it's sound bad said, uh, for what they're really doing. Actually, not going to wait long. But the thing I want to get to is the painting, painting of miniatures, which we saw a tease of in the trailer. And I know you actually painting was cathartic for you, sort of during the, the pandemic, right? Yeah. So the painting. I mean, you can't have a miniatures game without painting. And plenty of people have, lockdown, but I agree with I just you there. Myself, like learning to draw and just like just zoning out and feeling re really relaxed when the world was basically falling apart around us. And we really tried to capture that feeling. It, it's not like Photoshop or like special technical tools or anything like that. You, we just simulate washes, dry brushing. We've got decals. Um, this feels like you're actually painting a real miniature. And I have to say, because everyone's surprised by it, like all the miniatures you see painted in the game are all painted with the tool. Wow. So it's like actually pretty powerful. Amazing. Well, it's so cool that uh, you're revealing it here, and it's gonna—it's playable at Gamescom, right? It is. It's here. You guys are the first ones to play it. Wow. And uh, oh yeah, it's more. <laughs> We're over in the Crafton booth. Okay. Crafton booth. And for everyone else around the world, they're not yes. going to wait long, right? Yes, we'll be on Steam Playtest in September. Yeah. We have a couple <laughs> open weekends, and then we're going to be launching um, into Steam Early Access September 29th. So it's wow. really close. Only cool. a month away, Moonbreaker. Charlie, thank you so much the, for coming all the way out here. Thank you. Uh, I know you had a tough time. The, the dialogue that is right, kind of rubbing me the wrong the way. Worlds. Thank you so much, Charlie. And now it's time to reveal another game with a very catchy but tune But the rest of that sounds fine. Check this out. Mother! Let me tell you about the friends that invested all they had on a shady site that looked like a scam. It said, buy this magic card to play the coolest game and fight against your friends with no consequence. <laughs> So it's a card-based third-person shooter. What is what is what are we looking at here? Card-based first-person shooter. Inspired by the familiar story of Pinocchio, Lies of P is a new If you lie with P, then you lie with me. Neil Wiz, and you guide Pinocchio on his unrelenting journey to become human. This game looks absolutely great, and we've got a brand new gameplay trailer to show you. And this game is also coming to Xbox Game Pass on day one. Let's check it out. Okay. Can you hear me? I hope this just get just Matt Sharp. And say, can, can you do? Can you just do the song, but but sing Lies of P? Chaos, madness, death, and there might be no going back. But you can change that. It depends on the choice you make. What's up? Truth. Hey. Oh. Or lie. Slow pans over environments. Might be asking too much. Here we go. Please help me. 
Geppetto, G Geppetto lives inside the arm. The soul of him lives inside the arm in this. It's, uh, not to spoil the ending, but. Finally, so. we meet, <laughs> son. <laughs> the stage is set. <laughs> The light shines brightest in the darkest of times. All right, buddy, I'm here for you. Don't oh. worry. Talking lamp. Okay, sure. This looks really neat. Don't give up. Keep going. Like it kind of. I don't know, like, what if, and this is maybe a cursed sentence I'm about to say, but what if you made a Bioshock Souls game? You know what I mean? Your destiny. Sure, man. Yeah, why not? Lies of P is a good weird name. Them saying we're making a game loosely based on Pinocchio is like a crazy idea. Like hey, you. you're not seeing that out of other games. So that bombs? it's good to have some weird shit. Fear of missing Gamescom. Relax. Gamescom is everywhere you want. Gamescom now. Register now. That's right. All the fun of Gamescom is available from wherever you are online, obviously. And, well, in case you're wondering who that little guy is, that's Epi, and he's on a mission to save the Gamescomverse from the evil future. And if you want to help him, <laughs> Too check late. out the Epic section at Gamescom. The evil future one. You can solve quests. Pre-order now. Prices, so take part and help Epi to save the Gamescomverse. But first, I want to tell you more about uh, some of the great program we have for this week. And it's quite a schedule, so please bear with me. There is, for example, the Gamescom Studio by IGN, featuring game spotlights, deaf interviews, and all insights into this year's Gamescom. So you just say that the sure IGN that booth out, has so GameSpot interviews anything. in it? And also, the awesome indie showcase is back, featuring the newest, most original, crazy indie games here on Friday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. CEST, and I'm really looking forward to it. And something I'm really looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to is, uh, is, is, the, is the cosplay contest on Sunday, where the super creative cosplay community takes center stage. And this is absolutely one of my favorites. So make sure to not miss it out. It is definitely worth the watch. And for more updates, follow at Gamescom on all platforms. And well, now it is almost time to introduce our next guest, but sadly she couldn't make it since she is a tad far away. So let's see. She sent us a video, and I would say let's have a look. Enjoy your game. Hello, Gamescom. I'm ESA astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti, currently flying at around 27,000 kilometers an hour, 400 kilometers above your head, on board of the International Space Station. Today, I come to you to say bravo to the games industry. We see how many Can we get her a build of Lies of P? Creating recently. Those missions you send your Ship players on aren't just great fun. They create curiosity, interest, and the love of space exploration in gamers around the world. As we look towards returning to the moon and on to Mars with our ambitious Terra Nova program, humanity's spaceflight capabilities will be in part thanks to the games industry. And who knows? Perhaps even you will be among us here at ESA. Um, wait, journey. Among Us is I got a new space station space level? We didn't always have it. Fun. It's having real world impacts that lead us all closer to the stars. So on behalf of everyone at ESA, bravo. Keep creating, keep innovating, and keep playing. This is ESA astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti wishing everyone a wonderful Gamescom from the International Space Station. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to do some space shit to prove it. Sure. <laughs> Why not?
Is that an ad for space? It looks bad up there. Maybe I don't want to go to space after all. Can't believe I let that lady talk me into coming to space. Now here I am, dying in space. Eh, probably ought to go look at that, I guess. Hey, you seeing this shit? Stuff. We should go check it out. Stranded Alien Dawn. And now, kick the acoustic guitar back up. When we were looking at games for Gamescom Opening Night Live, uh, one of the things I was most impressed with this year is there are a lot of European studios that want to debut games here, and also a lot of brand new IP, brand new worlds, and we're going to introduce one of those to you right now, and I think you're going to get pretty excited about it. Check out this world premiere. Enjoy your gaming. The sand has memories. Memories of our past, when gods walked this world, and our heroes stood amongst them. But the gods' vanity grew, uh -huh. and in their struggle, we were cast away. And then the gods fell. Is this, is this god fall too? Come on. Only remnants of these stories remain in the sand. In the ruins of this shattered, broken world. What do you guys think of this uh, shattered, broken world, huh? Pretty crazy, right? Anyway, another day, another dollar. Jumping over gaps. Go already. I rebuilt your stupid bridge. Some sand sliding could be cool. launchers some weird whip sword action okay this new soul caliber is looking strange even in ruins we endure we won't let go For now, we can stand for ourselves. And face gods. Do you think you'll ever get tired of a uh, big world? third-person action-adventure games with uh, light-to-medium RPG mechanics. Atlas Fallen coming in 2023. Now, a classic strategy game that I remember playing in the late 90s is Homeworld. Did anyone else play that back in the day? 
great PC, Man. space, RTS, what a Bali, bummer. brand new Homeworld is coming out Silence. next year. Uh, Fuck. And we've got yeah, a brand no. new look. That's I guess it's been a very long time. Homeworld. Let's check it out. Enjoy your gaming. It was a simple perimeter scan, escorting resources. But we were ambushed by Kalan Raiders. The fighters were no problem, but the missile frigates were a different story. The command got clever. One wing used cover to keep themselves safe on approach. while another group found a tunnel in the structure to sneak behind them. We're on the run, talk, wait, range. Get you up. Let's do this. Many units were clicked on that it day. Worked. But just before a carrier battle group arrived, we scrambled bombers. Scanning zone adjusted. Perfect for attacking capital ships. This is bomber lead, engaging carrier. We protected the resources while they hauled in the goods. Which meant we could roll out assault frigates. Cleared hot. Let's take it to them. Stay on them. Break contact. The Raiders weren't pushovers, but command countered their hit and run tactics. The way their carrier exploded? Beautiful. And we even grabbed a little souvenir. That missile frigate is ours now. Looks cool. Looks like what you would want a home world to be. Homeworld 3 in the first half of 2023. Now, today is a big day, speaking of threes, because it's the version 3.0 three. update to Genshin Impact, uh, which is an incredible action oh. RPG from Hoyoverse. Well, today we've got an exclusive new look at version 3.0 in the new Rainforest Nation, as well as a sneak peek of a mysterious ancient civilization and settlement that is found deep inside the desert. Let's take a look at this world premiere. Enjoy your gaming. I have not played this game in a very long time. I was like, oh, I should um, figure out what support hoops I have to jump through to link my PC slash mobile and my PlayStation accounts because you can, you know, at some point they added the ability to do that because it was not there at launch and and I never figured out what I needed to, I, or like the, the process of that I was like, I got to write to somebody and you know, it was just like at some point I was like, I ah, forget it and uninstalled it can't on, see. on every platform. I'll approve you. Yeah. This game was cool when I was playing it. I'm, I'm sure it probably still is, but. I was going to try, um, what was the knockoff looking thing that came out? Uh, was it Tower of Fantasy? Is that the thing that just, that looks a lot like this? I'm literally looking at a zip file of the PC build sitting on my desktop, but I think that's like out now, right? That's why I don't need to install this pre-release thing, but I got a hold of it and then didn't play it for reasons I will not get into right now. There was never any problem with Paimon. That character was always fine. People got all fucking weird. Enjoy your gaming. What an absolutely beautiful game. And that's not all from Hoyoverse, because they also have Honkai Star Rail. Honkai? Oh, it's a grand interstellar adventure with strategic turn-based combat. And now we're going to take a new look at the story and adventure that awaits you in Honkai Star Rail. Enjoy your gaming. Keep honkaiing. I'm reloading.
we get some ELO or something to play while this train goes through space? <laughs> of five people, three must pay a price. You are not one of them, Jin Yuan. Me? Huh? Ah, hmm. Oh. 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 The Xianzhou is in danger. This man, he. The train is about to make the jump. Hold on, everyone. Sure. I. Yeah. Space train. Hello again! It is now time for our next Gamescom Award, and here are your nominees for the Most Wanted Microsoft Xbox Game. The Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me. The Last Case of Benedict Fox. Most Wanted Xbox Game, and I mean, naturally it's going to be Metal pretty Hellsinger. much all for third party stuff. And the winner is the last case of Benedict Fox. And here to accept the award Again, who Barnett voted on, like, how did this come together? Like, this is fine. Twist. It's fine to do awards. Okay. It's fine yeah. to do so awards for pre games yeah. that are not out yeah. yet. For us. Uh, just, just love, uh, but you kind of have to, like, games. say what the and, uh, we are working hard parameters on, uh, are. Benedict Fox, just that. And I would like to Why is the uh, Xbox team. Why is the and, uh, award Robin causing Robin extra distortion and ever. artifacts and on the stream? I would like to thank my team uh, in Krakow. They are crazy talented and uh, my hands hold the award, but uh, their hands make the game. Dziękuję wam bardzo. Thank you. Congratulations once again, the last case of Benedict Fox. And Jeff, back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melly. Uh, anyone here a fan of Justin Roiland? Rick and Morty. <laughs> well, he's got a brand new game, which you may have seen at Xbox's show in June called High no! on Life. It is coming to Xbox and Game Pass in December. And they wanted to send us just a great gameplay clip. Uh, you're gonna enjoy this. Uh, talking guns in a boss fight. And that's all I'm gonna say to set this up. I think you're gonna really, this is a trip. Check this out, world premiere of High on Life. Fuck this. Are you even a real bounty hunter? Oh my god. Jeez, Fuck so this. It's so that. bad. Like it's you know, the game whatever. Yeah, it's got a fire, it's got an alt fire, like you're doing a boss fight shirt, but like everything about the part where the gun talks yeah, and it talks with that guy's it. fucking voice, like fuck this. Shit, Are you kidding me? Stay in the air. <laughs> Better not fall in. Hey, I'm still here. You can still use me if you want. Oh, your grappling hook talks too. Did you know that? Not just all about Sick. Stabbing. Well, I'm mostly all about stabbing and tethering, but I can also deflect attacks. Oh, it's like he's oh, giving you tutorials fuck, yeah. while you oh, do it. it. Fucking heads off. Oh, fucking I'll rip their limbs off. Fucking do everything. Oh, I'm gonna fucking cut right into them. I'll cut their fucking asshole off and eat it. You know, all right. Work, mm -hmm. just your toxic personality. Fuck off. That wasn't even a good one. None of them are good ones! This 
Ah, uh, man. I, yeah. I'm the strongest out of all the Torb clones. I'm impressed you made it this far. My end soldiers are extremely strong. I like how all the voices seem to be just coming from the same place in the audio mix, too. Like, it doesn't sound like that she's over there talking to you, you know? Mark Zuckerberg, he's here, and he looks like shit. Mm. What is it? And it's the guy that runs the Wait, company. What are you? Don't eat. Don't eat that. Don't eat him. Come on, dude. Dude. You know she's gonna eat it. What? Yep. No. No. Told you. Gross. So I have a press release for that uh, Alchemy Labs thing they just showed. The unnamed title is Alchemy's most ambitious project to date, allowing friends to experience the studio's quirky gameplay together for the first time. Also, it is the first VR game built for hand tracking. So, you know, this is the job simulator people making their next game. And it is built for hand tracking and built for online multiplayer or, you know, multiplayer of some sort. I uh, did not look at the assets ahead of time. I thought that they would show a product which they did not. And now I missed whatever that's, this whole segment was. Oh, this is just an ad for 10 cents level infinite. You've been selected from among thousands of candidates. Hey, Cutter. To join the Lynx family. You're from Earth, right? This is more than just a job. It's an opportunity. You ever miss it? Caution. Oh shit, oh shit. Lynx, making the world a better place. What they say about work and space is true. I want to play this. There's I've had this thing installed for... Here. You don't have power here. You Ever. never will. Look around you. And I haven't tried it We're since it first expendable. like did early access or whatever, so I always meant to come back to it. Dance in between the ribs of a ship, gaze out at the rest of the human race, buzzing in the distance. That's when the sky fills up with flames. That's the way things go. Come on a console. Games. Oh, wow. Games are coming to PC Games Pass. Midnight Fight Express is out today. Uh, and that game's awesome. You should play it. It's a lot of fun. Oh, finally, your opportunity to play Immortals Phoenix Rising. You gotta help me rescue my friends. I like that they couldn't get through this bit without a fucking line of dialogue. 
like all these other games have no audio and it's just like the music playing but for that one they're like no we need a line of this really great dialogue yeah and you're right immortals was fine it's not I not a game I would spend go out of my way to spend a bunch of time with so I guess that makes it the perfect game pass game like yeah all right yeah you could first announced back at the game awards telltale's next project is based on the prime video series the expanse well, we showed you a little bit of the trailer at the Game Awards to set up the world. Now you're going to get a first glimpse at the gameplay with this behind-the-scenes clip. Enjoy. Drummer, his suit is punctured and losing pressure. You need to release the vault and pass it now or he could die. Hold still. We'll see what we can do. Captain Drummer, what are your orders? The Expanse is obviously one of those universes that has a ton of opportunity to tell great stories. One of the things I'm super excited about is the zero-G stuff that we've been doing. A big part of when we're making the game, not only are we thinking about the characters, we also have to think about how can we evolve the genre in any way or that will make players excited to be part of this universe and feel like they're engaging in something rather than just being a passive audience member. You'll figure something out. I know you will. It's actually been a really interesting thing as an actor to explore some of her more vulnerable sides that by the time we meet her in the series, they've been cauterized. <laughs> because this score, Drummer, this is the greatest score any scavenger has ever come across. You'll need me if you want any chance of unloading it. The craziness of uh, he's going to remember that if you push that button constitutes several parts in a mass that you can move them on and balancing that out against almost like you're excavating a story that's a personal story those are people those are characters and you are now among their ghosts whatever they were doing right before they died being a scavenger a pretty dark job we're really excited about how it feels to both play and experience the story in the game. Whoever did this is long gone, and we still have a ship that's ready to be scavenged. So get to it. I want to scavenge all these heads. Zero G head tech. Speaking of adapting things from one medium to another, here's a film adaptation that uh, into a game which I don't think you would have ever expected. Check this out. Harold and Maude. Enjoy your gaming. Ugh, the gathering got weird this oh no it's the gun from the fucking rick and morty game It's a weird property to do, but all right. I guess if we, if we must mine every horror property Ghost for some clouds. kind of we got it all tonight at opening night live, uh, you no know, four v one multiplayer game, game. announcement from a European publisher for a sci-fi action adventure, or whatever it is. Here we go. Enjoy your gaming. We always wondered if we're alone in the universe. 
observed and explored, but found nothing. Until now. It has been six months since the alien object known as the Metahedron suddenly appeared above Destiny Earth's Destiny 3. The traveler's all crazy this time. Sentient contact assessment and response team. Kate, we have an issue. What happened? Power supply failing. Sensors there are offline. secrets. I'm switching to backup generators. That's the button for backup generators? A weird joystick? has a cool look to it. Hmm. All right. Now we're going to talk about Gamescom Goes Green, which is an initiative that has made Gamescom the first climate-friendly gaming event in the world. The core event and this show, Opening Night Live, I'm happy to say, are one hundred percent climate neutral for the first time, and that's something we all should be very proud of. You guys are part of that too. Now, as part of this initiative, Gamescom, along with the United Nations Environmental Pro Program Initiative, Playing for the Planet are going to give out the first ever Gamescom Goes Green Award to the best sustainability concept from an exhibitor here at Gamescom. And the nominees are Microsoft, Xbox, Yuki, and the Indie Arena booth. And to find out the winner, let's turn it over to Melly. I feel Thank like the, you. the best you, sustainability would be like, uh, this Sony Gamescom and Nintendo Goes win because they didn't come. Is Yuki. They didn't come and put a bunch of lights and in our building. They didn't come and, and build a big CEO booth. Yuki. Congratulations. They stayed home and Thank put trailers so out on the much. internet. Thank you, Gamescom, for this wonderful award. It's brilliant to be recognized. Thank you to the Yuki team who worked so hard every day to be greener. Uh, and thank you to the UN's Playing for the Planet Alliance for inspiring us to change. You know, it's so fantastic to see these amazing game worlds that we're going to play in over the next year. But you know, we only have one planet to live on. And we only have one lifetime to make a change and to protect Speak that planet. Speak for yourself. So that we can continue to play our games. So. Everybody, whether you're a player or a business, can make one small change starting tomorrow, and together we can play more games together and save the planet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe, and congratulations once again to Yuki. And remember, it is not only the organizers or exhibitors that can go green. All of you can also make a change by donating to the Gamescom Forest. Yeah, so plant okay, your Gamescom tree today. How about Jeff, corporations? How about to you. Awesome. Why don't we Thank stop you very the much, Millie. Congratulations gigantic to companies that are... Uh, now it's time to announce a brand new game from a new studio of industry veterans working on mm. an ambitious new RPG. Here's the first tease. Mm. Okay. One of those games seems a little out of... Step with the others, but not that much. Okay. In the crux of reality, there exists two lies. One before the shadow, and one behind the eye. That's cool. That's a that's a fucking neat looking thing. Is that a D? Word song? Lots of news here at Gamescom. All right, let's talk about Xbox Anyways, and Age keep of moving. Empires 4 that continues to expand. Now we have news on the next civilizations joining the battle as free DLC. If you want to learn more about what's happening with Age of Empires 4, tune into the Xbox booth stream for developer interviews on Thursday. But right now, here's that announcement 
from Age of Empires 4. War song. There's more than one way to win a battle. And every empire must find their own path to victory. You kidding me? Whether you strike from a fall That's great. or ambush a sure. force, the Malians will use wit and strategy to outmaneuver their opponents and uh, gain the advantage on the I would, yeah. <laughs> With powerful siege tools and the ability to rally large formations, the Sometimes the music just distracts in a way that I'm no longer even able to process what I'm looking at. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know, Sage of Empires 4, I think. Uh, they're adding some stuff. What are they adding? I don't know. I, I bet this song's not in the game, though. What if it was, when though? It of war beat, how will you emerge victorious? History is in the making. Oh, and man. Your place in it has just begun. All right. Enjoy your gaming. Time to head to Gotham. You guys excited for this Gotham image Knights? from a distance where you can't really make out who the characters are and that color treatment and font and stuff like that. For a minute, I was like, wait, are they Batman actually doing Robin Agents of Mayhem 2? We're going to take over in Gotham Knights. You're probably wondering about the story. Who are the villains? Well, we've got a lot to share in this brand new trailer and also some exciting news. The release date is going to be a little earlier than you expected. Check this out. I guess I've just got Gordon Agents of Mayhem on the brain. On anything. That's why Gotham City is still here. It's why I'm still here. And I've known for a while now that someday, like him, I'd have to work with you. I've seen plenty of criminals in my career, but nothing could have prepared me for this. Remember that first person shooter, the Batman thing that they had to take offline and put back on or like, well, well, they went free to play or something, right? Brat girl. That was a neat game. Gotham, Gotham City, City Imposters. That That's cool. There's blood in the water. Like surprisingly so. They're all making their move. Play nice. But we aren't going to get Like, does anyone need this trailer at this point after this game's already been announced and talked about and like there's already been a fair amount of detail out there about it? Does anyone need this specific like type of showing? Like at this point, wouldn't you be like, here we're gonna play a level of the game? Especially if you're about to say, hey, it's it's out sooner than you think or, or whatever. Like, wouldn't you just say, check it out, man. Here's the game. You got my back. We're going to show him the game, Mr. J. Soon, the world will feel the cold as I do. I got one last little surprise for you. Come to watch the show, Red Hood. Nah, I'm just here to kick your ass. Oh shit, he's a badass. Pretty good trailer, right? October 21st now. Not really. For Gotham not, Knights. All right. I mean, now okay. It's time sure. to announce a brand new if they've game got from a new like studio, a bunch of gameplay hitting on websites the over the next few days here, then sure, I guess. But I, games. It's called Where Winds Meet. And it's an interactive. Also, I guess I did not follow RPG that game closely enough to know when it was out, due out. But late October sounds about right. The Northern Song Dynasty. The combat looks really cool. Check out this announcement. They move it up like three days or something. Four. Oh, well, shit. You... 
Yeah, for a game that's out in October, like show the game. Show the game. Oh, so hopefully that that's the, like the other shoe dropping right this week or something, right? Is they're like, oh, okay, we showed the trailer, this thing, and now you know, go to IGN and they're playing through a full level, or you know, or like show more updates or more stuff. I don't know. Yeah, and they, they put out little bits and pieces of gameplay up until now, but like, you know, you're saying here's our defined October date. Like that Sonic Frontiers trailer, not to compare something to Sonic Frontiers, but that was all stuff from that game. That was gameplay from that game. Mobility. Okay. Seems a little framey here on the feed. I don't know. You know, if they're just not optimized or whatever. They did, but whatever. Looks kind of neat. I don't, yeah. like that, is it? Enjoy your gaming. Where wins meet. Again, so much new IP tonight. It's really cool. All right. Back when we started O&L in 2019, a very special guest joined me here in person uh, to close the show. And this year when I told him that we were going to be back here live in person, he said, well, I got to take part in some way. Uh, so please uh, say hello to my good friend, Hideo Kojima. Mr. Kojima? Thank you, Jeff. Gamers Como no Mina san. Konnichiwa. Kojima Hideo des. Starting a Spotify exclusive podcast. It's the Japanese Joe Rogan. Konotabi, Kugatskara, Boku no Podcast of Angumio, Spotify de. なんと独占配信することになりました。おお。これですね。あの英語版と日本語版をそれぞれ同時通訳を交えて制作するというですね。え、新しい試みです。全世界のリスナーに。People yeah, you know, you do a season or two of a show that's Hideo Kojima in conversation with other people that make shit. Like, yeah. Brain structure. Brain structure.
Yeah. Last year at opening night live, we announced Park Beyond from Limbic Entertainment and Bandai Namco. And this year, they've got an awesome uh, booth experience for those of you here in person. And for those of you at home, we've got a brand new trailer that shows you more of this incredible amusement park simulation game. Wonder how that translated version of that'll sound. Here is a little something to inspire you. Be creative. Mm Set all the cardboard on fire. Great job, guys. This has a lot of potential. Anyone who rides this will die of a neck broken neck. Hmm. Could Perfect. Could go a step beyond? Hey, you took my thing. That's for my thing. Hey. I will always have a soft spot for roller coaster games. But I don't know. What about you? Every, every time one comes out, it, it never gets Beyond hooks in me the way I wish it did. Talk beyond. Coming soon. Namco putting that out, huh? So much fun. I love the diversity of games we have here. Amusement Park, Simula. I love Theme Park back in the day. Great to see that's coming out. Yeah, I mean, uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon, too. You know, All right, now it's time do? to share another special just go, announcement just go here play at that. Gamescom. <laughs> Not a game, but a concept car. That's right, it's here at Gamescom, and I got to catch up with Oliver Heimer, the head of mini design. Let's check it out. Okay, yeah. Let's check out a concept car. It's Pikachu. All right, I'm over here at the mini booth with Oliver. This is the mini concept Aceman reveal. This looks so cool. I'm glad you like it. Well, let's take a look and learn more in this trailer. Sorry. Does it just automatically play Pokemon Go? Like what? Very practical, putting a projector on the... That's, oh, that's it, that's so it. Cool. I have so many questions for you, Oliver. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you about this partnership, uh, well, a car with gaming features and Pokemon. How did this come together? Yeah, first of all, let's talk yeah, about business. Gamescom. I don't know. You know, yeah. Gamescom is um, one of the core events of uh, Femdom pop culture. And as we ourselves are a part of that pop culture, we don't mm. want to miss out such a great event. And is the Pokemon mini truly company, part of that pop culture? I suppose. And so. we have a lot in common. We're both iconic brands. And mini when was the last time the mini brand was truly a part a of pop culture? Is it Austin Powers? The world. And the world of Pokemon is full of unique characters with special powers. So we Italian share a job. love yeah. for distinctive design and strong values. I'm going to ask you your favorite Pokemon in a minute, but first, <laughs> I want to ask about the gaming this features we saw earlier in the trailer. Tell us, break it down. This, Why there's a vibe to this between that so and the camera shake. All, like, there's all just about this. the Ace gaming features. It's designed to be playful as the brand is. This is, stra this is a strange mode welcomes you inside of segment. The and then you can connect your gaming console to your Mini. And all you notice is a lot of details referencing Pikachu in particular. Yeah. The Aceman is fully electric, just like Pikachu ah. is an electric type. Oh! So they're a perfect match. Yeah. Uh, is there an overarching motto to this partnership? Hashtag big love. So indeed there it is. Um, it's hashtag you know, big love. We ask ourselves the question, what is if a car could connect it with your gaming console, just like it does with your uh, smartphone? That's great, yeah. So what if you could do that? playful mindset, just like our brand. Get exhibit out here. So our games. We're gonna put a PlayStation 4 in this motherfucker. 
never stop playing. Well, speaking of never stop playing, will we see you next year at Gamescom as well? Yeah, we plan to stay in the game and play on for sure. Like we always have from the get-go. Yes. So stay tuned. Awesome. All right, Oliver, thank you so much. And we've got much more O&L still. Sounds like a great way to crash your car. I don't know. Sorry, I was too busy playing games in my car. Dark I don't know. Concept cars. Set in the grim dark I usually like looking at concept cars because they are often so weird. That seemed not that interesting uh, from a concept car perspective. I don't know. Yeah. A convict freed to serve the Inquisition in this darkest of hours. It is your duty to fight and, if necessary, die for the Emperor. You can expect no help. No reinforcements. You are Tersham's last line of defense. So the, I think well, the last time we heard about this game, it was them pushing it back, right? Is that the... I feel like you can't have a Gamescom without like 30 or 40 different games from Focus Home Interactive. And Yaga. You got it all wrong. Once upon a time, there was a freak with no face. Stop it! You can't hide from Baba, Princess. I'm... How much longer you want to be a nobody? I just need to find the Red Oak. What you really want to find is... The Hut. What the hell is wrong with this forest? The year of the bow is back. Not bad. You kill it. You kill it again. <laughs> I ask myself that question every morning when I get out of bed. What will it be today? Will I be Anything the good or the evil witch? Always head straight to the Red Oak. Okay. Enjoy, 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 enjoy your game. Red Bull gives you wings. So there's maybe only like 20-ish, 15-ish min minutes of this left, right? I mean, they kind of have to... If they've got a big finish... I feel like I should look at this email again and see if... Sonic Frontiers, Hogwarts Legacy, Callisto Protocol, High on Life, Return to Monkey Island, The Outlast Trials. Did we see that? I don't remember. Lies of P, Genshin Impact, Gotham Knights. It says Goat Simulator 4 here, which is very funny. Honkai Star Rail, new IP from Unknown Worlds, and The Expanse. <laughs> Crossfire X, <laughs> come on. No, what are you really going to... Our biggest content update for a game that you will probably not play. This game uh, played real fucking bad. Now you can be a cowboy. Or a mech. Cats Cowboys v Mechs. The battle you've been waiting for.
And now it is time for a final award. But don't worry, there is more on Saturday. So make sure to not miss our award show on Saturday. Okay. But here are your nominees for the most wanted Sony PlayStation game. I was going to say, they did the Xbox one. So you would presume that they would do a PlayStation award. The Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me. Was that also announced for Xbox? Lies of P. Okay. One Piece Odyssey. And the winner is Lies of P. Here to accept the award is G1 Choi Project Director at Neowiz. The stage is yours. Oh, thank you. Um, first of all, I'm very proud of my team members. And uh, we always do our best to live up to the, our team's name enough. And finally, do you know BTS? <laughs> like BTS in Korean pop, uh, we will be done enough in the Korean gaming industry. Thank you. 감사합니다. Thank you. Congratulations okay. once again to Liza P. Yeah, do you think Thank his nose will grow so in that much. game or will there be some and other yes, mechanic like, you know, was that the, why that lady's nice. face was getting all Before I say goodbye, I want to bring was, your was attention to, rot, to a more she lied a bunch. Letter. The past 5 months of war have been devastating for the Ukrainian families and UNICEF and partners on the ground are supporting those in need and of course funds are needed. So please consider donating at unicef.org if it's possible and um yes we have to take care of each other. Gamescom also supports the development of Antura, the language learning uh, game for Ukrainian children. Antura is based on an app w which was made for uh, Syrian war refugees to learn the local uh, language. And I mean, in times like this, it is more important than ever to take care of each other. And I hope you keep that in mind, not only for Gamescom this week, but way after. Thank you so much. That's it from me and have a wonderful games come. Jeff, back to you. Thank you, Melly. Great to have you with us. All right. We got a few more games to go. Now, one of the great things about Gamescom is we love to profile games made in Germany. And this next game was made by four students in Berlin. It was a big uh, success on Steam and now it's coming to a new platform and we've got the announcement right now. In Television Amico. Eh, same thing. It's, it's the most fucked up thing I've ever said about the Switch. Oh, I, I apologize. This seemed like a game that would be destined to appear on Switch or Romantic. I can't wait for their golf game. Dorf on golf. Cute, beautiful. Now we're going to get cute dark. and beautiful. The Outlast Trials. You guys excited for this game? The Outlast Trials we showed you last year at Gamescom Open Night Live, and we haven't heard anything since yeah, really from sorry, the team. I, and everyone I, I keeps just, asking me, when I don't are know we going to get to is. play this? Well, tonight we've got the world premiere of the brand new trailer, and yes, some news on when you might get to play it. <laughs> Gonna show this trailer and then sorry we're canceling the game. Enjoy your gaming. The Suffering Three. Look at that pretty face. Yeah. Maybe don't go here. Maybe if someone says, hey, do you want to come to the cool Outlast party? Just be like, hmm, I got, uh, no, I can't. Elaborate and inclusive rather than terse. 
That was just a weird bloody hole you know, that I assume was the top of a guy's neck. That's right. Some people will get to play something this year. <laughs> Some trials. people right. will get Next to play up, something this year. We've got a tease of the first release from Embark Studios, Indeed. which a lot of the veterans that worked on the Battlefield franchise in Stockholm, Sweden. They've got a shooter wrapped in a game show format where destruction is going to play a key role. What we've got here is a short tease with some actual gameplay in it. The full reveal is coming later in September. You can sign up uh, starting now to get in to start play tests of this. Check out the finals. Enjoy your gaming. So is this a different game from Embark than the other thing that they... Oh, okay. All right. We got one more game for you tonight at Gamescom opening night live. So is this and this Dead is Island one too? we've all been waiting a long time for. Here we go. I don't know if I'd say waiting. Yeah, is it Ridge? Yeah, Ridge Racer. Remember when a build of this leaked out? Seems bad. Should get that looked at. So is that meant to be the Santa Monica Pier? Is the is it literally Hollywood? Is it literally Southern California? Yeah. That guy blew up. Alan Wake 2. Gotta get these batteries. So if this is meant to literally be... Southern California. I mean, I don't want to be a dick about this, but not an island. Not an island. It's true. Dead Island 2 coming next February. And joining me now to tell us about this long-awaited game is Khan. Khan, great to, uh, to have you with us. Uh, first of all, let's explain a little context to that trailer we saw. Who is that character that we meet? 
Thank you, Jeff. It's great to be here. Uh, so you just met Jacob, and he is just one of our six playable characters. Our zombie slayers have larger-than-life personalities do you voodoo and unique in this, dialogue, in this game? which fits in with a very pulpy and irreverent tone, as you could tell. Uh, I see the tagline there, uh, see you in hell A, so it looks like we're heading to, uh, to Los Angeles in this game? Well, uh, our pulpy tone is kind of a love letter to classic cult Hollywood horror B-movies, so where better to set it than in Los Angeles, uh, sort of a mo modern paradise. Going not, not an island. Oh well, yeah, it looks. Uh, Keely, looks follow cool. up. Just <laughs> say, well, the top, I can't help but notice, uh, not an island. On the narrative for it, uh, this game has been, you know, long awaited for many, many years. You guys have been working on it for a few. Yeah, I'm sure some fans would agree with you. It has yeah. been long awaited, but uh, Deep Silver Dam Buster Studios started work on it about four years ago. We were really lucky. We got to build it from the ground up. We got to focus on what we love about the franchise, the over the topness. And um, we think we've got a really great action RPG out of that. Uh, so let's talk about the gameplay. We saw the CG piece, obviously, but what can we expect from the gameplay when you show it? So Dead Island 2's gameplay is all about experimenting with your preferred zombie slaying methods, just kind of going nuts. It's a combat toy box of close quarters melee brutality with a few guns for fun. Okay, well, uh, can't wait to learn more. When are we going to get to see more, uh, see some gameplay of it? You want to see some gameplay? I well, think we want to see some gameplay. You guys want to see the gameplay? Nah. Can we do it now? The, the now? crowd just stays silent okay, again. Let's do They're it. Like, Here's your first look at the gameplay of funny. Dead Island 2. Thanks, be very God. funny. Enjoy your gaming. I mean, you know, th this seems like it's carved out its own kind of different style from Dying Light, right? Like, that was always kind of the... Stand the fuck back. It's hammer time. Given the things that have happened in some of these other trailers, it seems very weird to not show that. But Oh, and then also... Well, all right. Humanity's survival depends on the red gold pumping through my veins. Well, sounds like you're the star of the show now. This motherfucker! Nope, this effect is not done yet. <laughs> I guess, you know, if they're out in February, they, you know, they gotta be getting there. I like the look of it. I like, you know, that they are having the juxtaposition of bright, colorful LA with zombie game. Not that this is the first game to do that specific thing, but you know, and believe it or not, there is an uncut version of that trailer you can watch online if you want to see even more. All right, well, that's Dead Island 2. Why, why, you know, Coming in February, you had the 18 plus thing at the top. Up like, the you didn't need to do any of Opening night live 2022. Uh, it's been a fun show, but before we go, I just want to say I hope everyone has a great Gamescom. Uh, there's lots of live streams for the next couple of days, lots of things for you guys to go and play and check out here on the show floor. And as for me and the team, well, we're going to go back to Los Angeles and get ready for the Game Awards 2022 which I'm excited to announce will be live on Thursday, December the 8th, 2022 from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. We've got lots of great stuff we're working on for that. But until then, hope you guys have a great Gamescom. Thanks so much for being a part of Opening Night Live. We'll see you soon. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, of course. It drives views to their other video if they get people to go watch the full trailer or whatever. That probably is a part of... a part of the decision-making there, I guess. Well...
sure. You know, that, uh... That was about the show that I figured it would be. You know, you got to figure that there are, are other companies with bigger games that like Gamescom is always kind of that, right? Like the the traditionally. Um, let me close this here and we'll head over here for a minute. Traditionally, Gamescom is the show focused on Europe, and it's the post E three show where a lot of smaller games get more attention and a few games that missed stuff at E3 get shown. So there is some bigger things, but generally that's the, the lane that Gamescom filled. I think with E3 becoming a weird dicey proposition over the last few years, like the importance of Gamescom has been on the rise, but not to the extent where we're getting full on first party announcements and, and E3 level announcements. Um, at a show like this. So I think that that is cool. I mean, yeah, they, there was, there was definitely more here in terms of announcements and games and stuff being shown than I would say you probably saw in that June window, right? In that E3 window this year. So like, I, you know, I think that, that that's a, <coughs> a solid show. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> A solid show for kind of what you what you would expect out of that Gamescom time frame. And it used to be that you would have the big stuff at E3. You'd have this stuff here. <clears throat> You'd have Comic-Con somewhere in the middle there. So like games that make sense to the Comic-Con audience get shown there. <clears throat> and then TGS. You know, kind of as your last... Um, as your last show for the year. And now at some point, the Game Awards have kind of filled in that gap a little bit too. So you have that kind of, that December, um, that December hit for games that you want to announce very late in the year. And I think that that makes a lot of sense. But when you look at the cadence of announcements and, and all that sort of stuff, a lot of stuff is disrupted in a way that I think I was coming to this thinking that there might be a little bit more here. But instead you look at it and go like, yeah, no, there's, there's, there's a Gamescom level of stuff at this show. A couple of big things that you're Dead Island to, you know, a new hit for Lies of P, a new hit for Sonic Frontiers, like all that sort of stuff. And then, you know, uh, some smaller games getting announced and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So like in that context, I think it makes total sense to, for that show to be that show and for that show to be two hours, because, you know, there's just a lot of smaller stuff that they're, that they're getting through, um, so yeah, and then what? Nintendo announced a thing for later this week, but it sounds like it's going to be focused on Splatoon and another game whose name escapes me now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I Lies of P looks all right and is, a, I think, a ridiculous enough idea in terms of, hey, we're going to make this slightly Bioshock-ish looking clockworky looking kind of thing uh loosely based on pinocchio of all things like that's that's a fun weird thing to do so you know why not and the rest of it i, I think for, for me I, I look at it and think um that gotham knights thing stuck out to me as pretty weird for a game that's coming out in about two months to have such a cinematic trailer and not, and not have that lead to a stage segment that was like, Oh, you want to see some game? Like, like we got with dead Island. It seems like you would do a thing. You know, you had Glenn Schofield out there for Callisto protocol, just like something that's just like, all right, we're going to show a little bit of it here to actually show a video game. Like it's a big enough name that, you know, they could have, I'm sure they could have got the stage time if they wanted it. And yeah, no, th th maybe that's the, yeah, your uh, pink crayon in the chat says they put out plenty of gameplay for nights and it looks bad. So maybe that's the issue, right? Is they're like, oh, this game is super not showing well when we show gameplay. So, so maybe it's uh, a case of like, we got to just try to market around that and do the best we can. And we'll, we'll get on the other side of this someday and we'll just never speak the name Gotham Knights again. Maybe it'll end up being bad. So I don't know. 
It just seems weird for, for cuz this is a bigger stage, right? I mean, obviously they can put out their trailers and do their stuff along the way, but to to kind of be able to stand out in a showcase like this, which I think if they had the right footage or if the game looked as good as it as it as it could or whatever that that maybe it would, you know, not a ton of strong competition here. Um that maybe that would have done well for them. I don't know, whatever. We could pick apart fucking marketing strategies all day long. Who cares? But uh, I'm just, that that stuck out as something that was surprising that I would have thought that we would have shown or we would have seen more actual video game there than, uh, than cinematic stuff. But yeah, Sonic Frontiers still looks exactly like that game that I played, uh, Back in June, it looks very much like that game. And now they're saying, yeah, it's definitely coming out. Like, okay. I don't think that, um, I don't think a delay would make that game better. I think that there are core things about that game that are, unless they delayed it far enough to really change the in entire structure of that game, I don't think that they're going to make a game that's going to show better. They can show more of the kind of behind the back 3D levels. They can focus more on that because that's the aspect of the game that they kind of, that was the last thing they talked about was, Hey, it's got these two. And that didn't really dissuade people from talking mess about that game. People were still angry about it or whatever, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I am someone like I've said it before. I, I don't care about that, that style of Sonic game, the behind the back 3d, the, the kind of 3d Sonic game. I think that stuff just sucks and it's just not, it's not fun to do that. Like, Oh, if I hit the a button in time here, he automatically jumps from bumper to bumper. Do I play? Where do I play the, oh, okay. All right. Well, I guess I can jump between the rails here and do this and, like, I think that style of Sonic game is just, has always been fucking terrible. So, so for that to be the reveal they were sitting on, it's like, Hey, we've got traditional levels of the of Sonic persuasion. Um, and it's like this, like that to me, that doesn't, that does not move the needle. The open world stuff for me is at least different, right? You look at that and go, well, there's something different here. And you know, I, I am a person who thinks that they should do something different with Sonic. So at least there's that the open zone gameplay at least has something else than, than they have done with the quote unquote big Sonic games over the last what 10 years, 20, I don't even know like since Sonic adventure. I don't know. Uh, hopefully he kisses a human lady in this one and uh, all will be forgiven. But, um, you know, I have my doubts. Anyway, that's going to do it for the Gamescom portion of the broadcast. If you're watching live, then I'm going to get up and I'm going to use the restroom and then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about more podcast stuff like Midnight Fight Express, which I've been playing some of and, uh, you know, uh, Arcade Paradise and some other stuff. We'll talk a little bit about some of the news about how the Embracer group bought everything and uh, how Sega plans to make a Space Channel 5 and a Comic Zone movie, which... Sure. Why wouldn't they do that? Uh, so we'll come back after the break. And we'll talk about that. Or if you're just listening to the podcast, then it's the, you're 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 not gonna even gonna hear this stuff because it's not even part of that video. But hey, it's a confusing day trying to fit this stream into the middle of the podcast stream. All right, I'm gonna go use the facilities, and I'll be back in like I don't know a minute or something. <laughs> 